Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave, this time number 257. We are continuing our stay at home series, trying to make amateur radio fun and enjoyable uh, so that we can all have a chance to talk with each other or send CW to each other or messages or just FT8 or whatever it may be that we're gonna use our privileges as amateur radio operators to enjoy our time at home. What a chance we have to upgrade, to learn more, to try different modes, to piddle with our antennas, whatever it may be. Let's do it. Today, what I'd like to talk about are some requirements for the technician reference station. Now, by that, what I mean is the uh, mobile radio that we're going to put into the uh, reference station here. The reference station right now consists of the ICOM 7300 uh, power supplied, the Samlex SEC1235M. We know we're gonna have a power distribution center and we're going to have um, some uh, uh, power pole connectors involved, uh, an antenna for HF that we've looked at and has been promoted to the uh, reference station list is the MFJ2010, which is a great dual band antenna for 4020 and as a bonus happens to cover 10 and 6, but we're really interested in the 40 and 20 part. Well, now we need to add to that the uh, uh, reference station VHF UHF rig okay now i've been putting together some requirements for that and so i'm going to go over those with you now i would very much like to hear your thoughts on the matter which you can add simply by putting a comment on this video and don't forget to also click like too and subscribe while you're at it but uh, oh i guess i should uh, toot my own horn there this is a steam whistle i picked up years ago when I was at Mall of America in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And uh, uh, <laughs> it's kind of cute. It's got the, the least noisy horn that I've got. So I thought what I'd do is go over some requirements that I thought would be good, uh, things that would be nice to have that I don't believe are absolute requirements. Uh, and then uh, we're going to, over the next few videos, take a look at the lineup of mobile radios. First of all, I think that the, F, uh, the reference station for UHF, VHF, needs to be FM and a digital mode. Okay? So not just FM, but FM plus a digital mode. Nearly everywhere in the country now, there is a repeater available that either has D-Star, C4FM, or DMR. And each of those has its rather rabid proponents uh, as to how it should be done. And there's, uh, I rec fully recognize, a lot more heat than light in the debate between them. But what is happening now is that people are building bridges between them. So, for example, there are some talk groups on DMR that happen to double as rooms on DSTAR. So you can get people coming in from both ways. And I think we're going to see more than that. Uh, I'm going to say that, you know, we're going to have to pick a reference radio. But I might have some real close alternates for uh, other digital modes. So my requirements that I jotted down in my little notebook here, um, the radio needs to be two meters and 70 centimeters. Those are requirements. It's got to be a dual band radio, no single band radios here. Now I'm leaving out of there 1.25 meters, that's 220. Frankly, there's very, very little activity on that. I want to see more. 1.25 meters or 222 through 225 uh, megahertz, a three, whole, three megahertz wide channel, um, are great to have, but not a requirement. Uh, of course, the radio has to have FM. All the usual FM capabilities, which would include, you know, having the CCT, C, 
c t t c t c s d s s tones you know what i mean and um all of all of that sort of thing that you would expect from an fm radio um a digital mode I have not decided on which digital mode. I will tell you I'm leaning strongly to DMR, but um, I think that a big case could be made for D-Star, and some will make the case for C4FM. I'd like to hear from you on that. Uh, I may end up picking three radios that uh, count as general, but I'm only going to get one of them and put it in the station here, and that is the one that I will use for all of the demonstrations using the reference station. Um, we need DTMF, uh, that's dual tone multifrequency. It's the ability to put tones out. Um, I know that auto patches are not a big deal uh, anymore, uh, and that's what the DTMF was good for, but the DTMF is also good for controlling things and and stuff like that. Uh, long tone zero, which is a DTMF zero, uh, is used in some cases uh, for ARES or RACES to wake up and you know some sort of an alarm or something that will will tell people, hey, it's time to get on the radio and find out what's going on. GPS, not really. Um, a lot of cars have GPSs in them. Your phone has a GPS in it. Um, GPS in a radio is a cute, I guess. Um, if it's connected to APRS, I can see where that would be interesting, but uh, I don't see either GPS or APRS as being must-have requirements for the mobile slash base station that we're going to have as part of the reference station. A lot of radios have them nowadays. And so if it happens to come along with the one we select, then fine. Uh, the same with Bluetooth. Um, I'm not going to make that a requirement. Uh, we've gotten along without it for so many years. Uh, Bluetooth, if done right, will allow you to connect your radio through your car's entertainment system so you can have hands-free operation of a Q-cell. However, that does not allow you to change channels or do anything like that. It's just the actual conduct of a QSO. And after so many years, I can drive with one hand with the mic in the other, and um, I don't see the need for Bluetooth as a requirement. That's not to say it's not nice to have. Now, the Japanese radios, if you turn around and you're just in a VFO mode, turning around, the radio knows whether the frequency you picked is for a repeater input or um, a, a true simplex frequency. And it will automatically apply the offset for it. So if I were to just turn this radio to 147.195, it would know, oh, that's a plus offset. And so the transmit frequency has got to be 600 kilohertz higher. I don't know any of the Chinese radios that do that. I think that's only the Japanese radios, and it's been around for ages in the Japanese radios. Now, mind you, doing that requires making an assumption that it's the American band plan. The Chinese radios are marketed worldwide, whereas the Japanese radios are marketed more by market regions, North America, Europe, and so on, where they have different ways of doing it. For example, we use uh, CTCSS codes uh, to get into repeaters. In Europe, they use a, a 1700 hertz long tone to open a repeater. We don't. It, it, there's differences. So the Chinese who tend to market to the whole world with one radio have not incorporated that feature. I'm not going to make it an absolute requirement, but I sure like it. Um, I wish there were a way, a function, that we could put that into these Chinese radios. Now, memories, gosh, yes, we've got to have gobs of memories. Uh, we ought to be able to put the channel name in 
there so I can turn this and see Montrose repeater uh, rather than um, you know not necessarily knowing what the thing is for. A uh, crossband repeater is a popular feature. Um, it's not necessary. It's nice. Uh, it's hard because it, 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 it gives the radio a real beating. It's in transmit all the time. And that can really overheat a radio. If you're going to take one of these big mobile units and make it a crossband repeater for whatever reason, and there are valid reasons for doing it, particularly in tactical situations, uh, you're going to want to do it at a lower power level so you don't overheat the thing and burn it up. Um, I want the thing to have a PL259 connector for uh, the antenna. Uh, I know that uh, in Europe they use different connectors. Uh, I don't want it to have a BNC connector or anything like that. It should be PL259, which means the connector is an SO239. Okay. There should also be a connector for an external speaker. Uh, if you don't want to use the speaker in here, there's, or, or a place you can plug in a headset or something like that. Uh, like if you're using it in a busy... Um, emergency response center or you're working an event like uh, providing communications for a foot race or something like that. It's nice to be able to put on headphones because it can get really noisy in the operation centers. A lot of radios these days will also receive FM broadcast. Now that's different of course from our amateur radio FM use. FM broadcast is commercial FM and a lot of the Chinese handhelds and and even this uh, um, uh, any tone that I've got here uh, will receive those FM stations. Uh, to be perfectly frank with you, I don't see that as a requirement. Um, if you're in your car, you've got an FM radio. Cars all come with AM FM radios, and the speakers for them are much nicer than the speakers that come with the, the little uh, 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 mobiles and so on. Okay, so nice to have, you know, if you happen to be in a place where say you're operating portable and you'd like to listen to what's going on, fine. Yes, the radio should have scan. You should have the ability to scan your channels or to scan uh, through a, a portion of uh, frequency spectrum and so on. That I think really we should have. I'd be very nice to have a squelch uh, that you can operate by tuning a knob, like on this Yesu that I've got here. I've got a volume control, squelch control. Okay, now and, uh, there are other ways to squelch the radio. If uh, there's a lot of uh, intermod in an area, often a repeater will not only require a tone on the input, it will give you, for convenience sake, a tone on the output, and then you can set your radio to require that tone in order to open the squelch, and that can keep that squelch from opening when it shouldn't. Um, and that capability should be there. A lot of the Chinese radios don't have a squelch control that you can actually touch. You have to go into some obscure memory. Oh, maybe not so obscure memory. You've got to go into a, a, a menu option to set the squelch. And it's for the whole radio. It's not by channel. You can't reach over and turn it up or something like that. It would be nice to have a squelch control on it. Uh, speaker mics um, are... Good, again, if you are in an op center, you'd like to put on a little headset of some kind uh, and be able to operate the radio that way. Now, uh, the mics all have, these days, they all seem to be RJ45 connectors, like this one here, and the mics have lots of buttons on them and so on, and you can get headsets that will have that same connector. Um, that's, that's a little different. Um, okay, I would like the radio to be able to receive outside the ham band. I'm a real proponent of only transmitting on the ham band, but nice to receive outside the ham band. Uh, sometimes air frequencies um, 
or um, you know the local public uh, service agencies to be able to see what's going on. Um, also, um, the weather stations, the weather stations that are in the 160 megahertz region will give you uh, constant uh, weather output. Uh, be very nice to be able to get to those things too. So, and uh, power. Let's talk about power. There is this mad arms race that's been going on for years about how much power you ought to put out in one of these mobile radios. The standard these days is 50 watts. Some of the radios are coming out with even more. I have seen 80 watts. Let me tell you what is sufficient for a mobile radio with a mobile antenna or an antenna at home to get all the way to the hairy edge of line of sight, 25 watts will do you. You don't need the extra wattage. Now, for example, this radio right here, the, um, uh, let's see, this is the Chinese uh, D578 uh, radio, very nice radio, did an introduction to that thing yesterday. Um, that radio, um, it, it calls its highest power, 50 watts, turbo and then says high is 25. 25 is what you use. You really don't need to go higher than that. Uh, again, it's a marketing arms race to see who can put the most power out. By the same token, you don't need to put an amplifier, an FM amplifier, Class C amp, after this thing so you can put 200, 300 watts out. 25 watts or 300 watts, you're not going to get beyond the horizon. I mean, it will help you in the most marginal of marginal conditions. You know, it'll get you another three feet further. It's like the old line about four-wheel drive car. Uh, if you have four-wheel drive, you'll get stuck 50 feet further than the two-wheel drive guy will be stuck. So it's kind of the same with power. Anyway, my humble opinion. You're welcome to disagree. Now, what I would like you to do is to comment on this video and either add, subtract, comment, modify uh, the requirements that we've talked about here because I'm going to be codifying these requirements. I'll put them up on the website and we'll go ahead and make a selection of a radio and it will have, it will meet these uh, requirements. Now, it is time to toot my own horn. And please go to dcastler.com support and look at various ways you can support this channel. Uh, you can throw something in the tip jar. There's uh, also a way to set up a subscription on PayPal if you want to contribute a little every month. Or, uh, and this is probably preferred, go to patreon.com slash ke0og and uh, sign up there for a few dollars a month. Uh, every little bit helps, I tell you. And uh, also, if you tune in on the Saturday live streams, and there will be one tomorrow at 1 o'clock Mountain Time, 1900 UTC, um, you can contribute there via the uh, Super Chat, uh, you can also, there's a number of Amazon items I've got up on my website. If you purchase through that website, you pay the same price, but uh, I get a little bit as a finder's fee. And of course, we've got the video, uh, the videos for tech, general, and extra available on um, thumb drives. So if this is a time where you think you're going to be stuck and you want to practice your uh, amateur extra or, or whatever you want to prepare for and you don't have good internet you can get the videos. If you have good internet just please watch it online and it's all free. It's all free up there. So oh got to finish tooting my own horn and until we next meet 73.